If you're like me, you just got a brand new 4K60 Pro and you're gonna install it. Don't worry, it's incredibly, incredibly easy. It takes about 30 seconds. The only thing that you're gonna wanna make sure of is that you find an open PCIe slot on the motherboard of your computer. Then what you're gonna do is take the Elgato 4K60 and slot it into the front part of that PCIe slot. You're gonna feel a little click when it's in place. And then you're of course gonna wanna fasten it with some screws. Make sure that the Elgato 4K60 is lifted up a little bit uh, so that it's level and then just screw that in. The next and final step is to take uh, the console out and put it into the in slot on here and then you can uh, attach another HDMI cable to your TV that is going to allow you to do a little bit of pass through and really it's that simple next I'm going to show you how to set up some of the software for the best results so here we are in the 4k capture utility this is what you're going to see when you start up the program. It's going to show you the signal coming from your game console or PC. In this case, I have my Xbox One X beaming in Rocket League. So you see that in the preview window here. And to, uh, to, really, do, to really tweak the settings, you're going to have to go up here to the little settings gear. Uh, under general, that's the first tab. It's just for manual update, updates. It's for automatic updates. That's nothing to be really concerned about. In the device tab, here's where things get a little interesting. If you have more than one Elgato device connected, you're gonna be able to select which one you wanna use to record in the drop-down menu. So if you have, say, an HD60 Pro, uh, you're gonna be able to, to, to do that pretty easily. Uh, so definitely make sure that your 4K60 is selected. Um, for the HDMI color range and the EDID mode, I just kept it uh, default. I didn't think that was a big deal, and I haven't run into any problems with that. Okay, here's the recording tab, and this is where a lot of the magic is going to happen. So, first up, you can change the location of your... Um, oh, boy, that's tiny. Uh, so it looks like my scaling is all off on this 4K TV, but you can change wherever you want to uh, record to. I would recommend something a little bit faster, um, if you have a, a slower hard drive, you might see some performance problems. I typically record to uh, in SSD. That seems to work very well. Although some of the file sizes can get really, really big. Here is something that I fought with forever. This is the video encoder. And this is going to dis determine how you encode this video. Don't forget, there's no hardware in uh, encoder included in the 4K60 Pro. There's nothing. So there's no hardware encoding, period. So you have to select what component in your PC you're going to want to use to encode this video. And here's, okay, here's the thing. It automatically defaulted to my a GTX Titan X, and this is technically one generation behind the required. Uh, and even though it should work, I've read online that it should work from Elgato support, things like that. It should work, but you know what? It's really crappy. Um, I get this really weird nebulous little uh, exclamation point right here. I don't know what that means. You can't hover on it or anything. But in my in my experience with this, even at very, very low bit rates, I mean, we're talking like 17.5 here, I got a lot of judder. I got a lot of performance problems. And it's, it's very, very strange because the Titan X should be able to run it no problem, but it just sort of doesn't. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. I prefer the software built in. This is a little bit more CPU intensive. So if you have a good CPU and you want to uh, really save some of your GPU, this is the way to go. And this is the only setting where I can consistently get decent frame rates. Down here is where you're going to select the format of your video. You can do everything from 720p 30 all the way up to 2160p uh, 60 frames a second. And you know, if, if you're, I would always try to match this with the output of your console. So if you're playing on the Nintendo Switch, for example, guess what? You're going to want to do 1080p 60. If you're playing uh, a 4K game that runs in 60 frames a second, 4K on the Xbox One X, you're going to choose that. Uh, bit rate, I found it makes a pretty substantial difference. Uh, the sweet spot seems to be in the second third of it, the or the, the, the final third of the, the bar here. I don't have a problem maxing it all out, 
and that seems to give you the sharpest photo, the sharpest video, and it reduces a lot of that judder as well. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. However, one consideration is that these are massive files. So if you have a smaller hard drive, if you have an SSD that's filling up very, very quickly, you're going to want to be careful with how much you spend uh, on the on the bit rate here. Because as you can see here, at uh, about 140 megabits per second, you're looking at about 62 ish gigs of video per hour so that's definitely something to keep in mind i found that checking this box also helps with performance so if you reduce the preview resolution during gameplay that's going to make this this preview window a little bit lower res it's not going to look terrible but it does help with performance if you're struggling on that over here, we have the library, and as you can see, I've been capturing some Star Wars, some Rocket League, all in 4K. And here, here's the thing with this. It has performance problems in terms of the playback, so you're going to want to keep that in mind. If I go ahead here and I play this back, you're going to notice some, some juddering and stuff in here, and this is actually not in the recording, but for some reason, it it doesn't really perform well here. You can see some of the juddering. Um, if you go into File Explorer here, and let's see if I can find this. Uh, and you, you got to close this out too. I think that program is just a resource hog. But if you go here and you go into, uh, let's do this one, uh, Rocket League, you can see that the performance looks really great. And this is being captured in 4K, even though the game doesn't support 4K, it does output at 4K. This is all really, really smooth. And if you play it back in the 4K capture window, it doesn't look that smooth. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. For the longest time, I was really trying to figure out what the hell was going on. Why couldn't I capture this footage the way that I wanted to? And it turns out that, guess what? It was just it was just this program. You, look, at you can see some of the judders there. Not great. So something to keep in mind. Always check the core recording to make sure that it is the way you want it to be. Otherwise... Uh, a few little glitches to keep in mind here. So check this out. If I'm playing this Rocket League clip and I double click it to go full screen, if I go up to the X here, that is going to completely eliminate, unfortunately, any capture option that I have. And the only way to, f to, to actually undo this little glitch is to start playing another clip, double click it, and then hit the X button here, and all of a sudden the capture window appears again. You can also, um, after the fact go in and change some of your titles, the game title, uh, the tags that you have for that game. And then that's going to organize everything in alphabetical order. You can see I was just playing around here, even though that's Need for Speed Payback. I named it Star Wars Battlefront 2, and it organized it under S's. You can also search over here by tags, different tags, things like that. So the library utility of this program is actually really nice. And if you have a big like RAID setup or you have a massive hard drive, it's a very good um, tool to store a lot of those video clips. But... That is going to about do it. Uh, overall, you know, I'm really liking the 4K capture. It it seems to work very, very well. I will have a full review of it as, long as, uh, as well as some sample videos from some of these 4K games that I've been capturing. So you're not going to want to miss that. Definitely subscribe so that you don't miss a thing. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll catch you later.